numerous records were broken this summer, resulting in some of the hottest days ever recorded on Earth. Here's meteorologist Carl Parker with the latest Examination Earth report. Jim, so with oh. the front coming in, you know, look, what's worse for the leaves, the, the rain or the wind, do you think? Oh, uh, the wind, I think. It's scheduled for October the 14th. And Jim, she's going to be up there for the election. She was up there last time for an election. She did absentee voting from, you know, the ISS. So I imagine she'll have to do that again. And Jen, that may be good. Actually into western North Carolina. We've got uh, some of the showers um, extending throughout the southeast. Let's just start with what's happening right now. We jump down into South Florida. A couple of thunderstorms have rolled through Miami, Bahamas, northern Bahamas. You guys are getting some storms as well. But the moisture from what was beta is here in South and North Carolina. A little bit still left in Georgia. It's actually centered about 60 miles to the north northeast of Birmingham. We're still tracking the circulation. Here's all the moisture though far away and you can see that rain coming down for you in Charlotte. It is just a mess of an early commute. If you commute early, it's probably because you want to get there early right before everyone else. The rain is going to slow things down. Be careful because this will be easy to hydroplane with rainfall rates like we're seeing there. Up towards Bristol and the I-81 corridor heading up towards Whitfield. We're in some steady rain here. Asheville, uh, you're also dealing with some showers and over towards Boone in North Carolina. Felicia? Thanks, Jen. That rain's going to get you into the weekend. And so here we go, Charlotte. Obviously, it's a soaker of a morning. Just to look out your window. We're going to uh, see a few showers lingering into the evening. Then we do clear out for Saturday. There'll be clouds in the morning. It's going to be warm, though, in the afternoon. 81 degrees. Showers on the move tonight. We're going to see the bulk of heavy rain moving over into eastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia. Norfolk, I think it was a week ago, maybe a little bit more, that we were talking about big rain for you there in the Hampton Roads area. Unfortunately, we do have some big rain coming in again for you later on today, overnight tonight, and still lingering into tomorrow morning. Second half of the day will start to dry up. We'll go clear out by Saturday evening. Not cooling down that much, only to about 70. All right, what's happening in the track? We're not going to be dealing with the rainfall. Here we go right now. Raleigh, the rain isn't even as heavy as it's going to be. Look at all this coming up from Charlotte, heading up there towards the Winston-Salem area. Raleigh, we get into that as well. Charlotte, right now, we had some really heavy rain move through. Thankfully, it did move, but now the northern side of town up towards Concord and uh, China Grove, you guys are dealing with some really heavy rain coming down the suburbs up there um, all the way up to Salisbury. You can see that here just north and east of downtown Charlotte. All right, so that rain is going to be making for a tough drive from Greensboro all the way over to the Outer Banks here in North Carolina. More rain coming in today and up around Norfolk and the Hampton Roads area, Williamsburg. We've got some bigger rain coming in, especially later today. Felicia. Thanks, Jen. Well, speaking of North Carolina, missed it. The drought monitor updated every week on Thursday. It came out yesterday, and there is more of New England now in extreme drought. For the first time, I mean, last week we we put more extreme drought into Rhode Island, um, but we've never had this much extreme drought here before in terms of how long the drought monitor has been posted. Wells are starting to go dry. Pasture lands are, you know, incredibly dry as well. We need rainfall so badly across this region. And there's some chances coming in, maybe into Monday, but better chances getting into Tuesday and Wednesday. So with this next front coming in and the trough that builds in with it, it's going to stick around for a little bit here. And that'll give us a couple of days chances of getting some rainfall. Much needed rain across this area. It is really dry um, and tough certainly for, uh, you know, farms and apples in, in this area. Now, as fall arrives, driving can become more hazardous. Rain and wind can pull leaves off the trees, dumping them on the roads, making it hard to stop when you need to. Meteorologist Chris Warren tells us what to do to stay safe well ahead of every pace when it comes to where we are at this point in the season. Um, we're into the Greek alphabet. Post-tropical beta is the only thing we've got going on in Atlantic right now. That's the good news, right? And look at this. No development expected in the next five days as of right now. But let me tell you, things do change rapidly in the tropics here still at this point in the season. So we'll keep an eye on that. A couple of areas to watch. You've got Tropical Storm Lowell over in the eastern Pacific. But you know, we've already in the Greek alphabet in the Atlantic. We're still on the L storm across the eastern Pacific. Here's where we are. We still have 35% left of the season to go. We know in the middle to end of October, there is actually usually another little spike in activity. So we're not done yet. We think, you know, we have that chance of adding a few more storms at least. Now, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, an estimated 60 million people live in the path of hurricanes. With destruction from those hurricanes and sea level rise from climate change, it's a recipe for disaster when it comes to rebuilding. Meteorologist Chris Warren has the details.
wonder when it comes to the no. rain in North Carolina. We do not need there's a lot of places that do not need any more rainfall and we are getting it this morning. It's been really heavy in Charlotte. That's on the move. You know, we still are tracking what's left of beta. Believe it or not, you know, this is it. It's kind of elongated. It is attached to front. It's not, a, you know, tropical anymore, but it's about 60 miles north northeast of Birmingham and the moisture lifting all the way north now into North Carolina and Virginia. So we have the more humid air off to the south. You're with this circulation. We'll get some turning of the winds with height like we did yesterday. There were a bunch of tornado warnings I saw across parts of the Florida Panhandle. We could do the same thing again. I didn't see any confirmed tornadoes, but just know that that's a possibility today. Communities like Augusta, Columbia, and South Carolina, even Florence um, and Charlotte. Look, after this morning's rain, you think, oh, that must be it. We'll be done. Nope. We've got more to come. In fact, we'll get in some of these bands that could put down some heavy rainfall and they'll be a little more faster moving, which is good. Um, but you will be dealing with, unfortunately, some uh, some concerns for severe weather risk. You see the moisture coming up from Wilmington. We get into it by this afternoon and evening overnight. More rain coming your way in eastern North Carolina. We spent the whole week dealing with that onshore flooding and the big waves here on the Outer Banks. Now we've got the rain coming in from Beta, so it's a bookended kind of week here with some weather problems. About two to three inches of rain is possible. Most likely area to watch for flooding is going to be right here across northern parts of South Carolina into central, uh, I mean, South Carolina to central North Carolina. The concern is that you know, we've had this big batch of rain coming this morning and there's going to be more this afternoon with some bigger rainfall rates. The upper Midwest Felicia actually gets some big rain too. Yeah, Jen, you know, they need and plus the weather is going to take a turn for more fall like feel. So it'll be perfect um, conditions anyway for heading out there to do some fall foliage viewing after the front comes through. Um, look at the temperatures though. We go from the 60s to the 50s and the 40s. Talk about a roller coaster. Yep, our average high is 61 degrees. So for us in Duluth, even for us, it's going to be on the chilly side. Now, the last time we've seen a high temperature in the 40s was May, May the 10th. And by the way, the average first time that we go below freezing um, is, or excuse me, the high below freezing is November the 4th. We're not going to do that. I don't think so anyway. But look, it's going to be chilly uh, behind this front. We do have really hot air, though, out ahead of it. We've got temperatures approaching 100 over the next two days across the midsection of the country. But then when this front comes through, it just scours out the air mass, brings in the drier air, brings in the cooler temperatures. Now, here in the northeast, we're going to hang on to this a little bit longer with the above average air uh, until the trough really builds in. Um, and it will. So get ready. Detroit, for us, will feel it first. Temperatures going to be right near average or a smidge below above this weekend, heading up into the 80s, maybe for the last time of the season. We will see, because then we're dropping down into the 70s quickly, then to the 60s. That's it for highs and barely 60 on Thursday. So this, this is um, a long-lived cool down here. It's not like for a day or two. It's going to be pretty much firmly entrenched for the week. There's a second secondary spill of cool air that sweeps all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Get ready for a cool down here. Now, will we get some rain with that front in the northeast, Felicia? Uh, yeah, lots of places. Front sweeping through would definitely keep the tropical activity away for now. You know, it's still September, though. Important to remember that 35% of the hurricane season is still left. And there's always a little peak. You can see that actually in this map uh, in the middle to late October. So let's talk about where we are right now in the tropics. We know it's been a very busy season. Um, it's actually pretty much been nonstop since we started early before the season began in May. And that is when we had the first system of the season. That was Arthur. We are on a record pace for the number of named storms, record pace for the number of named storm days. And you can see just how active it has been. Uh, nothing um, since, let's see, the 22nd was the day, I think, that we finally got the post-tropical on beta. And there's been nothing developed since then. There's no activity expected over the next five days here in the tropics. Here We do have a couple of things over in the Pacific, which has had a very slow season. Actually, no hurricane for you since um, August over in the East Pack. But let's talk about the Atlantic side of things. We are running above average with number of named storms. We've pretty much doubled where you would expect to be. Um, but the ACE, the accumulated cyclone energy, it is above average. It is not at record levels, though. So we've had 23 named storms. Um, and when you jump down and just look at that ACE, we're at 104.94. The average is 77. That's above average, but it still doesn't put us, you know, top of the list. There are, you know, we're ranking 25 out of 170 years. We're near the top, but we're not at the top. We're not at the levels that we were in 2005. You look at October, just to show you, you know, what kind of activity do we expect? 20% of named storms, 20% of hurricanes, and 18% of the major hurricanes typically do occur in October based on history. And history tells us you got to look closer to home in October. And that's why we always worry so much about landfalls because they usually develop closer to home in October.
Alicia. That's right. From the 90s all the way into October, but that is not usually the case. All right, let's just look back at last year. I remember September. We tied across the lower 48. We tied our hottest September on record. It was really, really hot, exceptionally hot across the southern plains. You felt it in the Midwest as well. In the southeast, you had those 90s going all the way into October. Now, so far this year, we've had 90 for the last time so far um, on the 11th uh, of September in Atlanta in Greenville. It was the four 14th in Birmingham, it was the 12th in Nashville. That's actually pretty much right on target for when you typically see your last 90 on record. But I mean, go back to last year. It was the first week in October when we saw that last 90 of the season. And the latest on record is actually mid to late October. Look at some of these numbers. You know, you've got go all the way to the 20th of October for Birmingham as the latest 90 on record. So it could happen, right? But when you take a look at where we've been so far, all the heat has been in the west. The southeast has been very close to average. And now we've got these fronts lined up to come in. So this one, the first one comes in over the weekend, takes away that above average air. And by the way, averages are not at 90 this time of year. They're much lower than that, right? So we see that start to scour out and bring out the either average or below average temperatures. Atlanta, you're going to be in the 80s over the weekend. That's very close to the average high of 79 degrees. But what happens after that? Nashville, you're asking the same question. We're going back to the 80s this weekend after kind of a cool week. But what happens after that? Well, this front comes all the way through the southeast and it does bring down the temperatures. And then there's another front to come on through to sort of reinforce the cooling and temperatures are going to go below average and stick. It sticks for the entire first week of October and even beyond a little bit when you look at this pattern. So Atlanta, to finish out your forecast, yes, you're going to have an average weekend, even a little above average temperature wise, but then we go below average and not to say it's going to be cloudy and rainy like we just saw this week. We've got some sunshine coming out. No one's stealing your sunshine, but we are going to see those temperatures on the cooler side. Nashville, there's a few days we're going to be struggling to get out of the, the mid 60s and you know those overnight lows are going to be going even more. So the pattern that we'll have is a ridge across portions of the west that keeps you hot there, but it does stay cool across the east because we do have this big old trough digging in cut off low it's hanging around across the southeast. Temperatures stay below average throughout the entire next week into the following weekend. Very likely outlook here for below average temperatures across the Midwest, the South. Now, New England, we might hang on to some average or even above average temperatures. The West, we certainly will. But for, you know, places like Nashville or Birmingham or Atlanta, Jim, I think that's it for your 90s. I think you're right. Didn't you hear that? The West has been kind of busy, too. We, we had a couple of rounds uh, yesterday and the day before. Had some strong gusty winds and some hail, actually, in a few spots. Now, today, we're going to go farther north to Duluth, Minnesota. Yeah, yesterday, it was south of Minneapolis. Now, well north, up to the northern part of the state in Duluth. Thunderstorms in the forecast here. Temperatures are going to be in the 60s. There is the chance we could see some severe weather up across portion, portions of northern Wisconsin, UP of Michigan. Let's watch it all play out. Now, we've got some thunderstorms even this morning out there right across the northern part of Minnesota waiting until this front swings in into uh, the UP right over uh, portions of Lake Superior. We will be finding that chance of storms with hail or even an isolated spin up of a tornado across this area. There's going to be the two main risks that we see. So watching everything, timing it out for you by this afternoon and evening, the models have been showing it pretty far north and actually a lot of it centered right over the lake. So that would be great news. Of course, unless you're a boater, so if you're a boater, heads up, don't take your boat out um, later on this evening. We are going to see though that line potentially come all the way down watching the UP, Crystal Falls, uh, maybe even into northern parts of Wisconsin, Tomahawk, you were in that zone as well. And it could be you know, lingering into the late night. So just be ready. If you get a warning, know where you would go um, in this area. There are Torcons up. We've got a three on the Torcon across um, northwestern Wisconsin. Uh, we have a two down here across the eastern side of it. So it's, you know, it's not a high Torcon, but it certainly is the risk of rotating thunderstorms. Tomorrow's forecast, we've got a similar area that we're going to be watching for you and take a look. We've got a chance of some thunderstorms popping up again late in the day. This is 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, just waiting for that upper air forcing and the jet stream energy to come over. Tomahawk could be dealing with thunderstorms. All right, it is the weekend, and it's uh, football for some new folks. That's it. The fall fronts are coming through, and that's about as warm as we will get. Now, there'll also be a little bit of rain, too, that we will see with these fronts coming on in. We see it today, actually. You know, there's a decent amount of moisture, actually, coming up ahead of this first front. So we've got some decent rainfall in the forecast. There is a slight chance of getting some flash flooding up here because of the rainfall. We've got a chance of rain with the front that extends all the way down into the southern plains. Coming into your Sunday, down into Oklahoma and parts of Missouri, we could see thunderstorms, maybe some damaging winds or some hail. This is a front that's going to definitely pack a punch, that cold air kind of lifting the warm 
more moist air out ahead of it. That's how you get into those thunderstorms developing. But then behind it, you know, the fact that we are going to see this temperature drop off. I think that's what most of us will remember about these next couple of fronts that come in. It's not just one. There are two. The second one just reinforcing the cool air. It spills all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Get ready. Your temperatures are dropping off. All right, so we get the first batch of chillier air coming all the way down into the part, middle part of the week or the first part of the week. The middle part of the week comes that secondary push of air that'll be more refreshing, lower dew points and cooler, lower temperatures. Now with these fronts, you will get some rain chances. So not to say it's going to be a completely beautiful fall day with the blue sky and everything else, but we will get some rain chances, especially across eastern seaboard because of the way the trough digs in and we get stuck in some of that southwesterly flow, keeping us into the rain chances all the way up into the northeast. That's not a bad thing. We have seen the drought get worse and worse every week. Now Rhode Island, we've got almost 95% of the state in extreme drought, our worst drought on record here, and it's been tough. A lot of the ground is really dry. The pasture land is really dry, Felicia. Yeah, that's right. And of course, with it. Well, welcome back to AMHQ Early. I'm meteorologist Felicia Combs. And I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. Let's take a look at what's happening with the weather around the nation today. Got a lot of rain to talk about, especially in the south. We still have the remnants of beta out here causing our rainfall. But, but the good news is <laughs> yeah. no tropical development expected in the Atlantic over the next five days. Isn't that music to that's your ears? That's just amazing. Boy, did we all need a break. All right, so then we, because there's so much cleanup going on still, right? Uh, we do have the chance for rain rain, heavy at times, severe weather even possible with those remnants of beta in the southeast and mid-Atlantic. And of course, as we head out west, we still have many active fires ongoing and windy dry conditions are going to increase that fire danger. Now let's take a look at Raleigh, North Carolina. Remnants of the wineries were really impacted um, as well. All right, so we'll be following that story for you. We're going to get you into the weekend. It is Friday. We got some big games, home opener, season opener, Auburn Tigers hosting the Kentucky Wildcats. Temperature is looking beautiful, though. I know. Uh, lower 80s around game time, not much of a breeze. You can't yeah. ask for better than that. No tailgating on campus, but I'm sure you'll, you'll find a place to tailgate. All right, Pittsburgh Panthers and the Louisville Cardinals. We've got some pretty good weather, too. Temperatures in the 70s. This is really nice fall weather. Yeah, and I think everyone will be uh, celebrating that. Not only that we have football back, but also nice weather. Yeah. I've been waiting for some of those fall temperatures. Here they come. If you like the warmth, though, enjoy the next couple days. So Minneapolis, your average high should be in the upper 60s this time of year, and you'll notice we've got the stair step factor going on. You're gradually going to step down from the lower 80s on uh, Friday to the upper 60s by Saturday. And then we're talking about highs Thursday and Friday of next week in the lower 50s. That's awfully close to highs in the 40s. That's going to be a big change in just a couple days. So here's what's going on. We have nice warm, humid air above or ahead of this front. That also creates a problem, though, because that means we are going to get that front to possibly uh, trigger some storms as it moves through that humid air mass. But then behind it, much cooler, much drier air moving in for places like St. Louis. We're talking upper 80s on Saturday, well above average uh, through the weekend. And then you're going from a high of 85 degrees on Sunday to 62 on Monday. So well above average to well below average for a place like St. Louis. You're definitely going to be feeling those impacts of that front that moves through. As we look at Wednesday morning, Jen talked about it a little bit, bringing some of that rain along with it, but especially bringing those below average temperatures to places that have been above average for so many days now. Definitely going to be that taste of fall that a lot of people have been waiting for, Jen. Yeah, but uh, until then, in the West, we have places needed, Jen, and large parts of the Northeast are just bone dry. They need that rain. Take a look at the new drought monitor. Conditions worsening since last week with most of New England and drought conditions now new this morning with leaf peeping season upon us. We look to see if the drought conditions will impact your fall viewing. It's not. And the official from the Forest Service did say that storms involving strong winds and heavy rain are commonly thought of as bigger threats to the foliage season. So we are going to be keeping an eye on that fall foliage, what you could possibly uh, be seeing here. So let's talk about it. That is what you're going to be uh, looking for as we head through uh, the next couple days, next couple months. You start to see that foliage, foliage switching over to patchy or even um, nearing peak as we head through through New England, but the latest here you can notice that across northern Minnesota that foliage is already at peak, but as you head
head farther south where you've stayed a bit warmer. You're not quite near peak just yet. Still very patchy, still patchy for places like Denver and Missoula as well. So Jen, those people that have been planning to get out and see those fall colors, mm -hmm. some are going to have to wait a little longer. Yeah, but it's pretty windy out there. Know <laughs> that, but you learn something new That's every right. day. There you go. One place where you will not be confusing the fall foliage. Well, that is Florida. You might be uh, confusing when you should leave, though, because you're going to be stuck in this abundant transport of moisture kind of in the warm sector of uh, what was beta kind of still dragging these fronts through. Now, that front's not actually going to make it through, but it is stirring up some of that rainfall that you see through the Gulf. It is a humid, humid day. We've got some of those showers and storms already bubbling up down there around Biscayne Bay. So at times you're going to be dealing with showers and thunderstorms, especially during the afternoon. Some of those storms could put down quite a bit of heavy rain. You have so much moisture in the air at this point across, especially South Florida, that any one of these storms could really cause some um, urban flooding issues, especially in some of those flood prone places. And 95 is just going to be an absolute mess along the Treasure Coast, Palm Beach County. You're getting in on this as well. And Alligator Alley, some of those storms bubbling up could be pretty strong as we head through your afternoon. Still into four or five o'clock. We've got some of that rain lingering around, but you know the deal. The sun goes down and you start to see those storms kind of losing some of their umph as well. And that's going to be the story for today across Florida. And uh, I'd say just if you're traveling, give yourself a little extra time. Felicia. That's right, Jen. For those of you who have been waiting for that football, those SEC fans, good morning, Auburn, Alabama. Only one day until the day you've been waiting for, and that is the kickoff of the football season for the Tigers and our own Reynolds Wolf, of course. Those War Eagles very excited. Now the Tigers are hosting Kentucky at Jordan Hare Stadium. It's a noon kickoff tomorrow, but not just there. We've got some other games to talk about. Florida headed to Oxford. The Gators playing the Rebels. The weather looks wonderful in the 70s. Nothing weather wise to get in your way. And then to Lubbock, T uh, Texas to Jones AT&T Stadium. That's where the Longhorns are headed. It's going to be a bit hot if you're headed out there. Make sure you're staying hydrated with some water.